live. Let's see. All right. Let's see. All right, I see us. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Tonal Talk. I am here with the lovely CEO and founder of Tonal, Ali Arati. Hi, Ali. Hey, Kit. Hey, community. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties, but we made it. Um, we have a few updates, really exciting updates to share before we jump into our interview. One thing that we're revealing tonight is what the June challenge is going to be. So I'm hoping everyone in the comments can say hello and give their best guess as to what the June challenge, the June community challenge is going to be. So start typing in your, your answers, what you think it's going to be, and we will reveal that in a few moments. But before we do that, um, Ali, the new home screen refresh, how great is that? Uh, it's really exciting. We've been we've been working on that for many, many, many months. Um, I'd say almost a year uh, since the first time we took a crack at that, and I'm so excited to see it see it rolling up. Uh, it's beautiful. It's way more functional. It helps helps everyone find what they're looking for. Uh, I'm really excited. It's awesome. We've been working on it for so long, um, but now if you log into your trainer, it's a whole refreshed experience. You've got an ex a home tab, an explore tab, and a custom tab. You can find workouts tailored for you easier. You can have new browsing options. There's also something really cool called a muscle readiness filter where you can actually explore our content and see what muscle groups are ready for you to work based on your previous workouts and which muscles you should probably give it a day or two. And you can actually filter by those and Tonal will populate workouts that are uniquely tailored to where your body is today, which is incredible. So that's really fun. Be sure to check all of those updates out on your trainer. They're rolling out over the next 12 hours or so, um, but most of you should already have it. And then we're actually gonna have a product manager and a designer who worked very intimately on that project on Tonal Talk in two weeks. So save your questions for them. We're gonna have them talk us through what, how our team actually made this come to life. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, Ali, we've got tons of new content that just dropped this week. Uh, two new live beta workouts with Coach Paul. I was going to describe live beta, but I think I want to put you on the spot and have you describe live beta because I think you'll do a better job than me. Well, live live beta was really beta is what it suggests. It was it was something we we put out into the community as a bit of a beta to to test things out. Um, we've often contemplated what would it be like to have a live experience on Tonal. And live beta as were our first, you know, our first attempts to to experiment with that format and and fine tune it. Uh, and then as we get better and better, especially as we start to see more engagement with that content and people really fall in love with it, it helps us formulate a vision uh, for what live is going to be like uh, if and when we do it. Uh, and so far, you all are loving it. And uh, what I love about it is that you're working out with your coach as if it's in real time, but it's still tailored to you. So if I want to keep going on my sets, you know, Coach Paul, well, I'll make him keep going on the screen. But if I end my set early, he'll end his set early. But it usually matches up where we end at the exact same time, and he's coaching me through it the entire time, which is really, really cool. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. I encourage everyone to go check it out. There's uh, layers of strength and beat shredder, both with Coach Paul, around 20 to 30 minutes. So great to fit in maybe on the weekend or on an off day. Um, we also have and a big camp. Kate, oh. I, would just, I, would just add to, I would just add to that. Like That's really one of the big things that Tonal is about is personalization. Uh, we didn't start Tonal trying to bring a, another group fitness class into your home. We started Tonal trying to bring a personal trainer into your home. Everything we do is personalized. And that was one of the challenges with, with ever going live is can you go live and still maintain that level of personalization? And that's exactly what we've been able to do, that feeling of being live. You're with the coach. It's one of you doing it with them, but you're still having it personalized. It's very, very cool. It's magical. Um, and then we have a new boot camp from Coach Natalie called Level Up. And this is really special because it's very inclusive. It is designed to be all off the floor movements. So anyone who has limited mobility, is in a larger body, maybe they're an adaptive athlete, they don't have to worry about going up and down. You're going to be up the whole time. And Coach Natalie also gives beginner, intermediate, advanced options throughout the workout. So that's really special. And then a Coach Jared mobility workout called 
shoulder mobility, very straight to the point. I think it should be mandatory for everyone who works at a laptop and a new morning warm up with Coach Liz, which is perfect if you have a morning routine and you have a movement in there. This can be slotted in there. It's just 15 minutes and we'll get you moving. All right. Shall we reveal the June community challenge, Ellie? Yes, let's do it. Okay, let's see if anyone guessed it. We've got four weeks of fat loss too. Hmm, Susan, Jackson did four weeks of fat loss one recently, so I think we're gonna save that one for later. We've got uh, more gains more gains with chains too. That's a really good guess, Shelby. It is not Coach Paul. Someone guessed, yep, Holly, Coach Pablo. It is a Coach Pablo program. It's gonna be basic body split with Coach Pablo, his new three day a week program. It looks awesome. It has an ascending, an ascending pyramid rep scheme, which Ali, can I put you on the spot? Can I quiz you what that means? <laughs> no, I think, I think you'll get it right. I won't. <laughs> it means your first block, you're doing six reps, then eight, then 10, then 12 reps. Um, and it looks really, really cool. It is a beginner program, but if you know Coach Pablo, you mean that that actually, you know that that actually doesn't mean anything and it's gonna be challenging. Um, I'm gonna be doing it. You get four virtual group workouts a week, four Facebook Live Q and A's with Coach Pablo. You get workouts every single day of the week for a month um, and group camaraderie. So that's gonna be posted tomorrow. Look out for that group, join that group and join the challenge for June. Um, yeah, okay, we also have a Ask Coach Jackson tomorrow. Just wanted to give everyone a heads up that that's at 5 p.m. That's pushed back one hour um, from our normal time. So go submit your questions for Coach Jackson and he will answer them live tomorrow. I think we did it, Ollie. Thanks for being a great, uh, my great co-host for during the intro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we already have him up here, but I'll give Ali the intro he deserves. We are excited to welcome the one and only CEO and founder Ali Arati to Tonal Talk tonight. For those of you who don't know, um, he founded this company. He went from super, super computers to revol revolutionizing the fitness industry. And today we're going to dive into a ton of different topics with him, um, including what going what's going to come for tonal but especially looking back at this past year and we're going to answer a lot of your member questions that were pre-submitted so thank you for sending those in let's get started welcome ali thanks for having me thanks great to be here it's been, it's great to have you it's been about a year since we've had you on tonal talk and since then our group has grown tremendously i don't know if you saw recently but we just hit fifteen thousand members i um, did yeah, when I started, there were 300. So we've really grown and it's been really, really fun. But for those of you, for those who are watching, who are new, I wanted to give them a little background about you. Can you tell us exactly how you went from supercomputers to completely changing, disrupting the fitness industry? Uh, you know, it's kind of a funny, a funny story because I never ever imagined that I'd one day be the CEO of a fitness company, let alone like the fastest growing fitness company in the world. Um, as you said, like my first job out of college, I was working for Hewlett Packard in their supercomputing lab, like literally designing supercomputers. Uh, and I did supercomputing, I did networking gear, video on demand gear, storage, wireless, uh, basically spent most of my career, about the first 15 to 20 years, uh, designing what we call big iron. These are systems that are so big and heavy that um, you can't lift them yourself, you move them with forklifts. Um, you know, before Tonal, I never designed anything that ran on just one power cord. Right, just to give you a sense, <laughs> right? So big, heavy, complex, um, uh, complex equipment. Uh, and when I was about 35 years old, my health was just a complete disaster. I mean, I was having a blast in technology, uh, but I was overweight. I'd actually been overweight my entire life since I was a kid. Uh, I was literally, you can imagine the stereotypes of the chubby seven-year-old kid with glasses who could code, that was like, that was me. Um, so I'm overweight, I've developed type two diabetes, I've developed sleep apnea, uh, and just like all the things that matter from a health perspective headed the wrong direction. Uh, and I just needed to do something about it. So I quit my job and I spent nine months um, almost completely focused on my health. It's kind of like I decided I was going to make health my full time job. And I lost about 70 pounds uh, in that nine month period. But most importantly, uh, became really, really passionate about strength training. Um, and that was through a combination of both, you know, reading a lot and really learning about it and how powerful it was. Uh, and, and then also um, just experiencing the results, what, what, what strength training can do for you. Uh, and like everyone with like a weight loss story, you know, you, you watch what you can eat and you go do some cardio and then 
you know, there's this moment where I'm, you know, on a piece of cardio equipment in the gym and I'm staring and I'm, I noticed that all the experts, all the personal trainers, all the people who know what they're doing, they're not in the cardio section where I was, they're over in the weight room, but getting over there is really intimidating, right? You, you walk in there, you don't know what you're really, I don't really, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, it's hard to figure out. You start calling up people who supposedly know how to strength train and they don't give you great answers. Like, oh yeah, I can, uh, so buddy showed me around the weight room back in college. I can, I'd be happy to do the same. And I'm like, you're 35 years old. Should you really be doing the same thing you were doing back in college? And, and you start to realize that most people go in there and they do the obligatory bicep curl and bench press, but they don't really, really know how to use strength training. So the more I learned, um, the more passionate I became about it. And then, you know, one day I was sitting on a bench at the gym at like 5 a.m. in the morning, staring at this giant cable crossover machine. And I was wishing that I could just have this thing at the comfort and convenience of my home. And I was wishing it could actually be smart and keep track of my workouts and make decisions for me and spot me, you know, all the things you'd want from a personal trainer. And that's the day Tonal was born. I went home and ordered some parts and started working on prototypes. That was 2000, that was 2015. So that was about six years ago. That's amazing. And I've heard this story a few times, but one thing that just stood out to me is that you quit your full-time job, but you were still at the gym at 5 a.m. <laughs> well, I mean, for those of you who own Tonal, you, you understand this all too well. If you go to the gym any other time, that you go to the gym at 10 a.m., you can't get a good workout in because you're competing right. with other people for equipment. You put a dumbbell down, someone snatches. So yes, you're right. Unemployed, right? And going to the gym at 5 a.m. because it's the only time you can get a decent workout in where it's like quiet, right? Um, I, and that's, that's, I mean, that's more and more the reason I wanted to make a tonal, to build tonal, to invent it because I wanted it for myself and I wanted it for, for everyone else. What time do you get your workouts in now? Uh, right now they happen between, um, 10 AM and 2 PM. Um, okay. and they're scheduled into my calendar. Um, I used to be, I actually kept up with the five, 6 AM workouts until I had my first kid. Um, and then that was about 18 months ago. And now my morning routines are entirely like kid related. <laughs> and so I'm now scheduling my, my workouts in, in at work. And Kate, I have to tell you, um, if I did not have a tonal at home, uh, I literally would have made it to the gym, like maybe once in the past year. Like the fact okay. that I can get, you know, several workouts, great workouts in a week, um, is because of the tunnel. It's the only 100%, reason. Agree. 100 percent agree. Um, so before we dive into the future, I do want to talk about this past year. Um, since you last were on Tunnel Talk, it was May. Uh, the entire world has changed, quite literally. And there have been <laughs> many, many challenges for everyone, personally and professionally. But there's also been a lot of blessings that have come out of this past year. Um, and I was wondering what you are most proud of achieving this past year, either personally or professionally. Well, um, I mean, personally, of course, just, just keeping it like for any, anyone who managed to keep it together this last year. Right. Um, you know, between like having having a demanding job, a family, a kid, very, very little child care when when we're in quarantine, keeping mental health together, um, keeping families safe, like, you know, anyone like for everyone who went through this last year, it was the most challenging year we've all had personally in our lives. And personally, I'm just I'm just like so blessed and so happy um, to have survived it. Um, professionally, I think the thing I'm I'm so proud of um, is just how Tonal has has performed. Uh, just as, as the way we performed as a business and for our community. And what I mean by this is like, yes, it's easy to say that in a COVID year, in a quarantine year, um, that every fitness business uh, accelerated, right? I mean, it's just brand awareness accelerated. There was a pull towards working out at home. Um, but I think there were two things that, that were different at Tonal. Um, one is we accelerated way faster than everyone else in the sector. Uh, and to pull off 8X year over year was just, was just crazy. Um, but the second thing is we did it in a very, very chaotic world. Uh, I think most people don't realize what actually happens behind the scenes uh, to keep, to, to scale a company, not 1X or 2X, but 8X um, in a year where you have global supply chain disruptions, logistics, disruptions, like the world is literally falling apart and we're trying to run faster and faster. Uh, and I'm really, really proud um, of what the Tonal team was, was able to do during that period of time. Um, it was not pretty. It impacted a lot of a lot of people, especially our customers, our members. Not always in the in the best ways. Sometimes in in ways that that were painful. Uh, but the fact that we were able to to even pull it off is is I think quite incredible when you consider the circumstances we were we were doing that in. 
yeah, I can just say from being on the other side and wanting to <laughs> tell our customers everything that was going on, uh, it, was, it was a challenge because there was just so much happening. And we were a relatively fresh team. You know, we weren't, we weren't, we were, I'm really proud that we were prepared to handle it and we did, but we weren't, that wasn't the plan. <laughs> you know, it wasn't anyone's plan. And so no one was ready for 8X. <laughs> no one was, ready for, no one no one was yeah. ready for the pandemic. No one was ready for 8X, but um, yeah. we're here and we're still surviving. So, but I do want to dive into the delivery times a little bit more. Um, Pre pandemic, our estimates were two to four weeks. Um, currently, they stand at 10 to 12 weeks from ordering, ordering to delivery. Um, and we haven't seen them consistently decline yet. Can you walk us through a little bit more in depth about those challenges that we faced and where where we're going from here? Right. So the first the first challenge, by the way, so you know if you go through the challenge, the first challenge was was not just keeping our supply chain running, but but scaling it, right? And so you're you're in a world where you're calling up suppliers who are literally under lockdown. Like for example, you know when you pull on a tunnel, that that rope that you're pulling on, that's like high performance sailing rope used on sailboats. Um, that stuff was made in Italy, and the factory that made that rope shut down during the pandemic, um, because the, the first, yeah, the first European outbreak was in was in was in in Italy and Europe, and we were literally like calling up the the owner of the factory, begging him to like get us this stuff, <laughs> and and he he snuck them out in the middle of the pandemic, and sh you know shipped like several several hundred thousand kilometers of this stuff to to yeah. our our factory in, in Taiwan, and and we eventually like you know have set up redundant supply chains where. For almost everything now, we have two different, at least two different suppliers you can get it from. Um, we've doubled, uh, we've actually doubled the number of factories that are producing tonal. So we, we don't just have one big factory, we have two massive factories, um, two of the largest contract manufacturers in the world making tonals. Um, and then at each one of those, we've more than quadrupled our output. Um, we're somewhere between four to six X at, at, at each of those factories. And so there's just a lot of, a lot of scaling and that took many, many months of really, really hard work to do. Uh, and then the next challenge came came in logistics, right? We we now have not just global shortages in, in the materials that flow through through manufacturing, but it turns out that you know we we literally make about two times as many tonals every week as we sell, um, and they're all in Asia and they're all on boats, <laughs> right? We have we have about fifty to sixty million dollars worth of tonals sitting on the ocean right now, making their way to the United States so that we can deliver them uh, deliver them to, to customers. Uh, and, you know, if I don't know if, if people have heard, but, you know, if you go fly over Port of Long Beach or Port of San Francisco, there are dozens of container ships sitting there sometimes for four to six weeks just waiting to be unloaded. Uh, and so you know, the, the name of the game for us um, has been has been trying to do our best to to under promise and over deliver. And so we continue to say 10 to 12 weeks on our website because we don't know what the next challenge is going to be. Um, but things are improving and we're confident that by the time we're like we're in the summer, we can be back to back to normal in terms of delivery periods with one minor caveat, um, which is in the past, every time we have lowered our projections for delivery windows, our demand has gone up commensurately. So we might like go from 10 to 12 weeks down to eight to 10, down to six to eight. And then a bunch of people are like, oh, wow, it's only 60. And then they start putting in orders and like the, you know, and so th there's that effect that we, we can't fully predict. Uh, but trust me, it is the fact that, that we can't deliver tonals the day that you order them is like, is what keeps us up at night is our single biggest pain point. Uh, and uh, we are doing everything we can. We want you using tonal. We want them in your homes. Um, we do not want them sitting on boats. That is the last place I want a tonal. There are so many times where I'm just like, I wish I could go get it and bring it to you myself. I can't pick it up, but I will figure out a way. <laughs> oh, can we like send a helicopter out over the Pacific and just like, pick, like, am I, you know, Mission Impossible this thing? <laughs> um, and it, throughout all of that chaos, what's one lesson of where we could have done better that we're taking forward? Uh, it's 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 one thing. It's it's called hiring ahead of the curve, right? Um, it used to be that you know as soon as you started to realize that you needed you needed a certain person, you would begin the search. And what we've been training the team to do more and more for like the last six months is to not ask the question, um, "Hey, who do we need now?" It's that who, who do we think we're going to need six months from now? Who do we think we're going to need nine months from now? And start 
searching for those people, hire those people, train those people so that they're actually up and running and like running at full speed just at the time you need them. Uh, and it's, it's made for, you know, it's for, for the, for the team, it's been an adjustment. Of course, you go to someone and you're like, Hey, we're going to start searching for so-and-so. I'm like, what are they going to do? I'm like, trust me, we're going to need them in six months. <laughs> right. And, and that's, <laughs> that, that's a, you know, that's a flip that I think a lot that we probably made a little bit too late and it, knowing what I know now, I would have like, that's the one thing I would have done def differently last year. I would have woken up in January and I would just started hiring like crazy. Yeah. The first news headline just hired. <laughs> yeah, to totally. I mean, I mean look, look I, I think a lot of people don't realize COVID-19, it was it's called COVID-19 because it actually started in 2019, not 2020. Sure. Um, sure. It just took a few months to get to the U.S. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so speaking of hiring, we in March announced that we got an additional round of funding or series E and we raised $250 million additional in capital, which brought us to an evaluation of 1.6 billion with a B, which is incredible and brought us to unicorn status, which I didn't even know what that was until we went through it. Very cool. Um, but before we talk about what that additional capital means to Tonal and where we're putting it, I wanted to hear what the journey has been like for you personally. Did you expect this? Like, what was that moment like when you were the head of a unicorn? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I, that had to have been, that was always our business plan. Like that was what we promised investors way back when, when we raised that first money. When you look at the size of this market, you know, this, this is a path on the way to success, right? For us, um, it's, it's just, there's so many people that we can help and it's such a large market um, that unicorn with, with, you know, with the beginnings of success was, was inevitable. Um, and so it's what we've always been been driving towards. Um, but what it is for us, like what it means to me is it, it's a it's a huge unlock. Um, it's an unlock in terms of the talent you're able to hire, the suppliers you're able to hire, the people you're able to partner with. Um, and it, it allows you to to just accelerate, um, accelerate the business. Um, you know, when you go to your first contract manufacturer and you're asking them to make a bet on, you know, I think four years ago, make a bet on a startup, it's a different when you walk into one of the world's largest contract manufacturers um, and you have the credibility of the world's best investors and this massive valuation and all of this momentum um, and and they're like yes we would love to work with you right as opposed to you trying to convince them same thing when you're going after the world's best talent i mean we've hired some amazing executives just in the last six months a chief operations officer who has a ton of experience dealing with complex products where safety is an element we hired a vice president of logistics whose only job is moving product from the factory all the way into your home. That's only another one who's vice president of planning. Only job is to make sure we're constantly planning every every which way, everything that could go wrong, what our plan is on how we're gonna get and mitigate it. Um, you know, we've hired people in every single department from content to curriculum to I'm gonna more people in finance. All of these things are helping to accelerate the business. Uh, and uh, and that's all enabled by by that step. But it was always the goal and I had to get there and it was just this sigh of relief when I fi was finally there because I knew the doors it would unlock for us to just keep going after our mission. Well, that answered my next question, which is where the money is going. So thank you for that. Um, we've had so much excitement in the community from our members wanting to invest their own hard earned money into Tonal, which I just find so inspiring and makes me so proud to work for a company where our members feel so uh, connected to the brand that they want to put their own money into our company. It's just so special. And so I was wanted to ask you on their behalf if this is something that you think we'll be able to accommodate. And if so, maybe when and if not, why not? So first of all, I, I, I absolutely love the passion that the community has around this. And I've been reading the threads where people are like, you know, can we invest? Why won't Tona let us invest? And, and, and the, the passion is, is amazing. Um, here's the thing. Um, public companies can take money from the general public through, you know, through NASDAQ, through like through public exchanges. Private companies cannot um, solicit investment from from the general public. Uh, and so that's the SEC, that is as that's an SEC rule. Um, it's SEC regulations and, and we simply can't do it. It's illegal. Um, there are people who obviously, obviously like there are people who invest in private companies. Um, but that's usually done through a combination of financial advisors and lawyers who are evaluating the investment. Typically, they're not doing it alone. They're doing it in groups of people um, where you have, you know, a syndicate of folks that come in all at once. The risk is being spread across them. They're typically investing across multiple private companies. Uh, and so private 
private companies do take money from private individuals, but it cannot be done in a public forum. That's simply uh, illegal. And I would get in a world of trouble for doing it. Uh, and um, I wish we could, but we couldn't. Um, Airbnb was really interesting. So um, what Brian Chesky tried to do at Airbnb is he really, really wanted Airbnb stock to end up um, in the hands of, of the hosts. Um, and he literally worked for several years trying to figure out how to do that, the mechanism by which you can get legally get private company stock into the hands of hosts pre-IPO. Um, and working through SEC regulations, he could never figure it out. What they ended up doing instead is donating the money to an endowment and, and saying that the endowment was for the benefit of, but like these things are so complex. Uh, and I hope, I hope at some point the SEC figures something out. Um, Obama had signed something called the Jobs Act way back when, um, which had had opened up a glimmer of hope that you could you could do stuff like this, but never worked out. Uh, so here we are. Well, Sorry, that I was know. a longer answer probably than you were bargaining for, but it's no, illegal. I, appreciate, I appreciate that you have taken the time to listen to the community and look into it with our lawyers and our finance team and to see if there's a way to make it possible because I know this is something that you do care about and that you have tried to do. And so I appreciate you taking the time to explain that to our members why why we just can't do it at this time. Um, if the laws change, we'll be in touch. <laughs> Um, so moving on, the connected fitness space or the in-home fitness space has really heated up in this past year. Uh, we've had competitors come on the market. We've had competitors excel. We've obviously excelled. Where in the marketplace do you think Tonal stands out and what are some areas of opportunity? Well, the first, the first one is really, I mean, the thing, first of all, the thing everyone knows about digital weight, right? We invented that. Um, and so when you look out into the world, for the most part, what you're seeing is folks who took a pre-existing piece of fitness equipment and brought it into the home to deliver a group fitness experience, right? And that's not what we did. Um, we did two things that were really, really special. First one is we reinvented the equipment. And in our case, that was digital weights, this thing that we invented. The second one was we didn't deliver a group fitness experience. We delivered an AI-driven, intelligent, personalized experience. Uh, and the goal was, well, if you have this piece of equipment in your home, just like working out with a personal trainer, everything you should do with it, everything it should ask you to do. You should feel like you're with a coach in real life. It should be personalized to you. It should respond to you. It should react to you in real time, like a spotter that spots you, um, like, you know, um, smart flex a mode that actually shifts the resistance through your range of motion to optimize the building of your muscles. Like all of that level of personalization is what we do best. And we did it by reinventing the equipment from the ground up. And that took years. It took three and a half years. We filed over 40 patents. Um, and that's really what our what our differentiator is. It's it's you know we're we're not you know we're in the outcomes business. We're like personal trainers. We're trying to get people to achieve their goals. We're trying to change their lives. We're trying to drive them to a result. Um, we're not just there to check the box on you did your workout. That does not make us happy. Uh, what makes us happy is results change. And I think people can see that personalization come out in the features and see how it drives our design. Like just today, uh, the home screen redesign, it's not just prettier, but it's more personalized to you. You have workouts that are more unique to you and what your likes are and what you did previously and what people like you are doing. And you have these muscle readiness filters, which show exactly what your body needs today and what muscles you should probably rest today. I don't know of any other technology that can do that, but I'm excited for more feature enhancements to keep pushing the envelope on personalization and what digital weight can do. So. And there's, there's a lot more of that coming, but like, you know, I'm reading the comments here and they're cracking me up, but one, you know, Joe is like, I hate the AI and I think it hates me. My mornings are getting tougher by the week. And that's exactly the point, right? You can't just, you can't just go there and not challenge yourself. And, and that's what a lot of people do. They go to the weight room and it's the obligatory same thing at the same weight for years. Um, and you're not making progress, right? And that personalization of knowing you and knowing when you're ready and pushing you, that's what, that's what it's there for. Yep, no challenge, no change. Um, congrats to David Kunold, who just ordered his tonal yesterday. Excited for you to join the family, David. Um, Ali, what does excite you most about tonal for the year ahead? Uh, it's just, it's all, it's all of the, the personalization that's coming. Um, we are doing, um, we're, we're basically investing every day in making the system more intelligent, more personalized. Um, we now have, you've seen some of the blog posts, we put out some blog posts about some of the stuff we're learning from the data, but when you have a community this large, we now literally have run the largest strength training physiology research studies in history. 
Um, and we're using that, that, that stuff to actually make, make our system smarter, make our coaches smarter about how they create workouts. Um, and then there was some stuff we, we kind of hinted at, but like live beta, I'm excited about live beta, not being just beta. Uh, and there's a whole bunch, there's, there's some really, really exciting stuff in the realm of personalization coming, um, where you can really, really personalize your workouts. So I'm, I'm excited about all of that stuff. That's where yeah. we're making a lot of investments, just, um, more content, more coaching, um, and more personalization. I wish we could just share the roadmap, but we have press in here. We have competitors in here. Unfortunately, we can't do that. So we do have some member questions that I want to get to. Um, this one comes from Joe Wetterhan, uh, who, and Joe, let me know if I'm saying your last name right, um, who wants to know about more of the future of Tonal. And you kind of just hinted at some things. He asks, if you could describe the Tonal device you'll be producing five years from now, what do you envision? How will it evolve from today's product? And as I just mentioned, we can't just lay out the roadmap, unfortunately, even though that would be fun. But is there anything you can kind of tease or let us know is coming down the pipeline? Well, our guiding, our guiding principle is, um, is personalization, right? And so at the end of the day, it's about constantly working to make tonal smarter. So every day you wake up and you turn this thing on and it's smarter than it was the day before. And so when you think you're like, when you sit down and you, you have your wish list of how can this thing become more personalized to me? How can this thing be more holistic? How can it help me in more elements of my fitness journey, more elements? In it? That's where we're going to continue to make investments. And if you imagine what that might look like in five years, that's probably where we're headed. Right. I don't know if I just gave away the farm by saying that, but but that's that's really our goal. It's to give it's to give everyone a personal trainer, um, and 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 that's and, and we're better positioned than anyone to do that. Like our our AI, it doesn't just see you; it feels you, right? It's not standing six feet away from you like a personal trainer, you know, eyeballing it. Um, the amount of of measurement we have going on and the precision of that is is really exciting. Um, these are that's the reason we have like clinical trials running with the Mayo Clinic for tonal and rehab applications. It's, it's fueled by the data and what, what that data can tell you about the person um, that you're treating or, or helping. Okay, so we didn't get specifics, but we, we got a few things. <laughs> Did I Next, say too much? <laughs> uh, no, we, we always want a little more, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, one next one comes from coach Pablo, our beloved coach Pablo. He says, what do you feel are the biggest impacts or is the biggest impact tonal has made on the connected fitness industry and the greater fitness industry in general? Um, I think, I think we, I think we actually brought strength training into connected fitness. Um, and, and I, I don't, I don't say that lightly. I, I will tell you that in the early days of tonal, everyone I talked to, um, equated connected fitness with cardio. Um, and everyone I talked to, and I'm talking to like really smart investors and people who like supposedly, you know, made hundreds of millions of dollars of, of, of money uh, on behalf of, you know, on, on behalf of their funds over decades, right? People are supposedly really smart and they're like, but, but connected fitness is cardio. Are you sure strength training would even work in a connected fitness? And so the fact that people are now considering the connected fitness sector to be cardio plus strength, um, we were the plus strength part. We did that. We that that mountain we climbed, um, and and that's something that I'm I'm really proud of. Right? We defined the category. It's pretty cool. Trailblazers. Okay, Michelle Kenyon Young, Young asked, "What are your thoughts on the frequent comparisons of Tonal as a company to other companies such as Peloton? What's Pel? I don't even know what Peloton is. How do you view Tonal's future in the connected fitness space? You've kind of touched on this, but basically, what do you think about the constant comparison?" You know, I think um, I think human beings need to compare. That's just how that's how they think. It's how they simplify the world. Like, you know, what is what is Postmates? It's Uber Eats. It's it's sorry. What's it's Uber for food delivery? Like like we, we have this habit of trying to like draw analogies, um, and I, I I don't personally like it because every time someone does that, um, you feel like you, you you lose something in translation. It's kind of like well, you know, what is Tesla? It's like a car, but it's electric. And like, no, it's, it's like the most incredible car you've ever experienced. It can accelerate like no car you've ever seen. It's great for the environment and you never have to go to a gas station ever again. It's not just a car, but it's electric. Right. Uh, and so that's every time someone like throws out one of these, these comparisons, it's kind of like, ah, oh, you kind of missed the point. Um, it's the most amazing piece of fitness equipment ever created. I don't care what it's like. <laughs> great. Honest Just truth. Right. <laughs> I mean, I mean like I, I've, I've had, professional athletes say this to me like this is why this is why they call us up and say can we can we invest right it's because it's the most incredible piece of fitness equipment they've ever seen 
Um, I've received emails from people in the community who I, I never know and have no reason to email me. And probably a dozen different people have said in some way or another this phrase to me, I'll either have three products in my life where when I got them, I knew the world was going to change. The iPhone, the Tesla, and the Tonal, right? It's yeah. like, it's, 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 it's a future defining type of a product. Uh, and, um, you know, for people, I don't know how many people in the community have never touched a Tonal, but like go to Nordstrom's and touch it. Go to one of our showrooms and touch it. Um, beg someone in the community to like let you into their garage so you can try it and bring your mask. But you know, it's it's just it's it's mind blowing when you touch it. It can't be explained. It's a product I've never been able to overhype. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're in LA, you can come use mine. <laughs> um, okay, another question from Michelle. She says, "I love this one. Has anything surprised you in terms of what members love about Tonal? Like something you didn't expect to be big that people just really grabbed onto?" Look, I, I thought, yeah, there is, there's one. I thought, like, I knew people would love the workouts. I knew people would love, like, the responsiveness and the AI and the personalization and the ability to track your progress and get that on your mobile phone. Like, I think all of that I expected. The thing I didn't expect is how, like, passionate and excited people would become about this one thing that we call the Strength Score, right? Oh we, designed, <laughs> we designed the Strength Score kind of like, you know, the odometer in your car. Like, you know, you, you kind of look at it over time to see how, how much progress you're made. Like, I don't know if you can hear my kid, but he's screaming. Um, you, we, we designed the odometer, we designed it kind of like to see your progress. You check it every month or two and watch yourself get stronger and know that you're making progress. Um, and in the early days, we didn't like contemplate that people were gonna check this thing immediately after every workout. It's like, it's like, you know when you go exercise and you like get off the treadmill and then you go like jump on the scale to see if you lost any weight? <laughs> But we didn't expect that, right? And that's exactly what people were doing. And we started focusing a lot more on how do we make the strength score more, you know, more accurate and more responsive to what's happening in real time rather than like over, you know, the, the long run evolution of like, how are you getting stronger? And it's, it's actually a different problem than we initially set off to set to, to solve. And we kind of learned the hard way that that's not what people wanted. They wanted like, they wanted that instant gratification. So we're working on it. Yeah, poor Taylor got pretty sick of me. Well, no, he didn't. He was always gracious about it, pinging him like, hey, I got another question about it. Hey, another question, another question. He's like, okay, we got to do something about this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, like, I, there are a lot of things I could spend time on and like looking at like charts of like strength score evolutions by cohort. Like these aren't the kind of things that I thought I was going to be spending my time on, but <laughs> you know, it happens. <laughs> Yeah, here you are. <laughs> um, a question from Holly Schreiner. Hi, Holly. She says, is there any tonal feature that you didn't think was going to happen, but our team worked some magic and brought it all together, surprising you with an outcome? Oh, ab absolutely. The, um, the partner workouts one, the feature where you can work mm -hmm. out, um, you can work out with other people like remotely in real time and like you see that I actually, I never, I did not think we were going to build that for a long, long time. And I didn't, you know, and, and the team went and built it and within tonal, within the inside of our walls, it just kind of caught on like fire and everyone was loving it. And it immediately became clear to us that, that we had to, had to ship this thing. Um, but in the early days I was like, you know, is this, you know, is this like a 50,000 member community type of feature? Or is this like a 500,000 member community kind of feature? And I figured, you know, maybe this is another year or two away before we build it. Um, and no, I was wrong. People loved it. And, and I had nothing to do with that feature. It just happened. Um, there's a lot of stuff that just happens. I'll give you another example. I, I think this is a testament of like, I'm, I'm proud of the team and the culture, but the culture we built in the, in the company. But do you remember when, when all that stuff happened with the NCAA where Sedona Price like tweeted a photo of like the weight room, right. the yeah. NCAA women's weight room versus the men's. And then a few hours later, we like stuck a bunch of tonals. We tweeted and then stuck a bunch of tonals on an, like, I had nothing to do with that. Like that was like, no one had to ask my permission to donate 10 tonals um, to the women of NCAA, fire off a tweet and like put tonals on an airplane. That's just something they know we do, right? That's who yeah. we are. Uh, and I, I love that. That's another example. That was a really fun day. That was a wild ride. Okay, next up, Edwin Young. Hi, Edwin. He says, Tonal is the undisputed leader in the strength category of the connected fitness industry. Thank you, Edwin. It is also unique in that Tonal's primary focus is strength. Many other connected fitness companies offer a wide range of options to appeal to as many people as possible. Do you see the industry continuing to try to be a one-stop shop for everyone, or do you see companies specializing in one modality? I think we're going to have both. Right. 
Uh, and and I think like this is this is a large it's a very very large market, and I think there are there is going to be at least one player who's going to focus on the idea that like our offering is a one stop shop, and that's what's going to make us special. And then there are going to probably be a few others who are going to focus on on different things. Um, and yet to see which strategy is going to win and which strategy is going to yield, you know, better results for customers and a more valuable, a more valuable business. Uh, but you know, it's like there are there's the cheesecake factory, and you can get everything at the cheesecake factory from Thai food to hamburgers to to salads. And then there's there's steak houses who make just steak and they do it really really well, right? And so um, I think there both models are valid, and and there are some elements of our strategy that that I think. Uh, I think people will come to appreciate over time of like why this is going to be so impactful for people and so transformative to their lives um, rather than just trying to be everything to everyone. Right. Cheesecake factory is pretty underrated actually. <laughs> <laughs> Their cheesecake's good. <laughs> Next question comes from Adam Pruitt. Uh, he says, the sense of community that has been created for Tonal really sets it apart from its competitors. Thank you, Adam. How do you plan to maintain that as you scale? What other ideas do you have for even greater community involvement and cohesion? And I also want to put in a plug for one million pound shirts. And Ali, I'll let you take a stab at this, but I'd also love the opportunity to answer this as well. Oh, I, I was going to duck out of this one and, and say, say I'm, the only thing I need to do is keep giving our amazing community manager high fives every day. Uh, <laughs> and how do you see the community evolving, Kate? I'm really excited because, um, well, for one, just the way that it's, scaled. I'm really proud of this community for how we've kept our culture. And that hasn't come from me really policing that much. Like I haven't had to delete a ton of comments and kick people out or anything dramatic like that. It's really come from the community coming together and being like, hey, this isn't what we stand for. Not this kind of community. Take it somewhere else, buddy. And I'm just so proud of this community for how they've come together to maintain our culture as we've scaled from 300 people to 15,000. And so I'm, I can't wait to, to keep going and I want to really uplift the voices of the prominent members in our community who have made it what it is today. And some of you are watching tonight and I appreciate each and every one of you. And I wanna give you more tools and resources to build your own communities and to help moderate our community. And so more on that will be coming. Um, and I also, I got permission to, to tease this, but we are thinking through ways that we can bring this community experience that we've built that we all know and love here in the Facebook group into the product experience. And so that might look like being able to follow your friends um, through the app or seeing what workouts your friends are doing or liking and commenting on the workouts your friends are doing within the tonal ecosystem. And so it's been really fun to be able to see that come to life behind the scenes. And I'm just so excited to bring that into our group and to keep growing our community within Facebook and on the trainer. So. I could keep going, but there's more questions for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the one, the one thing I, I just add is that thing that you said is like, and I saw some of the, the comments flying by, you're like, don't don't try and like get rid of Facebook community and move it in app. Um, that's not how we're looking at it. We're looking at it as like, how can we create more and more ways for this community to support each other? Um, yep. And what happens on Facebook is is amazing and magical and we can never take that away, but we can keep adding to it, right? And that's yep. how we think about it. Yeah, and to me, it's it's taking the concept of our community out of just a Facebook group. Our community is so much more. We're on Instagram. We're in we're real people in real life, and I want to bring us together for in-person events and all sorts of things. So we're not just a Facebook group. We're so much more than that, and I'm excited to keep investing in that and bringing us all together because our community is amazing. And I'll move on to the next question so I don't just keep talking forever. <laughs> um, next question is from Kenny Lucier. Hi, Kenny. He says, um, do you have, do you view the knockoff products, his words, not mine, as validation of tonal or as a threat? Uh, I definitely don't view it as a threat. I view it as validation. Uh, I mean, we are, we are years, years ahead uh, and of course have all these patent protections. And so the way I see it is whenever I see someone trying to create anything like what we've done, um, I view it as validation for what we've done, validation for the market. Um, and sometimes also as a compliment, right? Uh, and it's not always like someone trying to build something just like that. Sometimes like companies bigger than us will take things that we did and then go do the same thing. And we're like, oh wow, look at that. So. A little bit of both, a little bit of everything. We've kind yeah. of seen it all, but I'm sure there's still more to come. <laughs> and Kenny also asks, what's your favorite program? 
Um, four weeks to fat loss is still, I know it's an oldie, <laughs> but I still feel like if I need something to just kick my butt, uh, that's still the one I go back to. Just, it was like one of the original Jackson ones. Um, so much so that I have been lying. It hasn't happened yet. So no promises community, but I've been lobbying for us to like the same way we did it. Go big or go home to other lobbying for like the follow ons to that. Ali, four weeks of fat loss two has already been released. <laughs> oh, it has. I didn't even know that. <laughs> so I'm still doing four weeks of fat loss one for no reason. <laughs> yeah, you can move on. And I know it's okay. been released because I am 15 out of 16 workouts through it. And I Wait, have to say, when did it, when did it get released? It got released like a couple months ago. I think you've been a little ago. busy. <laughs> I have been. I wasn't paying attention. I'm just like enroll. I'm just like, I just, I am this, I like, I literally like, I, I'm not supposed to do this, but like I get to the end and I just go back and start over. <laughs> uh oh, our coaches are going to yeah. yell at you. No, but it's so know, good. It's, just, it's each workout is a beast and mentally I have to prepare all day to do it. So I still have one workout to go. And I'm going to finish it this week. Smita, who is also in this community, she says she hasn't finished her program yet. And we're going to finish our programs together soon. It's going to happen. So now I have, a, I have a conundrum. Do I finish four weeks of fat loss or do I like end it early and jump into, into two? I have to see that. Well, my personal vote would be for you to join the June Community Challenge, Pablo's. Mm. That'll start in second or third. That's a good um, point. That's going to be really fun. And then you could finish do that in july one and then four, the facts, four weeks to fat oh. loss too yeah love it okay <laughs> done deal last final question ali what does it mean for you to be your strongest uh for me it's okay so you have to like back up and like understand like my life i work 12 hours a day um i have a kid i have a high stress job i have elderly parents like for me being my strongest is literally just holding it all together right and the the hour that i get to work out and shower in the middle of my day. Like that's my reset. It's my recentering point. Um, and that physical strength, that mental, the mental like reset and like, that's, that's what tonal gives me. And that's what it means to be my strongest. Honestly, I don't know how you do it. It's very impressive. Um, and I can't <laughs> wait until we're all back in the office and I can come visit and give you an actual high five. It's been too long, but I just want to say thank you on behalf of our community for coming and spending an hour with us. We really appreciate it. We know how busy you are and we just always love hearing from you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. Cool. Well, we'll see you in another year, I guess. <laughs> or sooner or sooner. Um, <laughs> Hopefully with all this hiring, I actually get like less, less busy. <laughs> yeah. And we can do some in-person stuff and maybe we can all get together in real life. And, and maybe we can show people our new office. I mean, we actually moved to a new office during, during COVID. We have a really nice fancy new office with like a beautiful gym and like an outdoor roof deck. And uh, it's really awesome. Um, I, I don't, have, you haven't seen it yet. Have you Kate? <laughs> I haven't seen it. And I'm, I'm like secretly hoping that it actually never opens because I'm going to have so much FOMO that I'm not there. <laughs> It's, oh, it's, oh, Kate, okay, yeah. it opened like three months ago. <laughs> well, I know, my team's not working in it yet, so it's okay no, now. Yeah. <laughs> so but I'm just, I'm just lobbying for an LA office, like a big one. <laughs> that might happen too. <laughs> yeah, that, this is my Feedback Friday request. <laughs> cool. LA office. All right, Kelly, um, go take care of that baby, and we'll see you soon. <laughs> we'll do. Everyone, wonderful to see you all. Bye. Bye.